So this one's pretty straightforward. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find many problems uh, for us to do. So at least it's uh, information that we'll use in the, I'm going to tell you now, the Skimpy project that we have. Um, of course, it might, be, it might not be Skimpy for future years, but this first one will be possibly Skimpy. So um, we're using semi-log plots to construct exponential models for data. And I just want this to be larger for us to see. So that's why I'm cutting off the left margin. So in chapter five, we talked about uh, exponential functions, but now what we want to do is use semi-log plots uh, to plot these and see if they're truly exponential functions. Because what happens is if I have an X and Y axis, for instance, there's the Y axis, here's my X axis. If they're linear and the telltale sign of a linear, linear plot, is if that, for instance, oops, if for instance this one, this is zero and this is one on the x-axis and then this is two and this is three and this is four and this is five, etc. Notice that again, um, I showed you this once before, that the distance between two and three is the same as, this, as the distance between four and five. It's the same as the distance between 0 and 1. It's three units as I've drawn it here on this graph paper. Um, and if I'm linear in the vertical, even if the spacing isn't the same as the uh, horizontal, for instance, if this is 1, what did I put up there? 5, and then this is 2, and then this is 3, okay? Note, again, that the distance between 3 and 2 is 5 units, and 1 and 0 is 5 units, and 1 and 2 is 5 units. So this is a linear scale as well. So this is a linear linear plot. And if I plotted a line on linear linear plot, um, it would go up one and over one. For instance, if I had a slope of one, and it would look like this. Now this looks a little odd because it looks steeper than a slope of one, but it's because my scale over here is not the same as the scale down here. But it'll still look like a line. A line will look like a line, okay? Now, if I investigate a little further about what's going on with this exponential plot on a linear linear scale what ends up happening is I end up having something that looks like this okay this being zero one and this is some hundreds of thousands types of numbers and so it grows relatively slowly faster than a line depending on the line the slope of the line but eventually it'll pass every other uh, function that we can build uh, other than other exponential functions that have faster growth rates. Okay, It'll eventually pass. So if I had a line that looks like this, at this point, the exponential function is going to grow faster and it'll, it'll blow, up, blow the line out of the water. Even if I had this, if we just move further to the right, this guy is killing this one. Okay, So um, an exponential function is doing exactly that, growing exponentially. Now here's the trick. If I have a semi-log plot, I end up having a different scale on the left-hand side. Okay. I end up having, this is going to be linear. That's why it's only semi-log plot, because half of it is linear. Uh, half of it is logarithmic, the other half is linear. So down here on the horizontal axis, I'll have a linear plot. And over here, I'll have a logarithmic plot. So this will not be the number zero. This will actually be the number one. It'll be the exponent um, of zero, which causes the number one. This will be the, the distance will be 10. So this distance from one to 10 is only nine units. Okay. Then this took three, three boxes as I've drawn it here. So another three boxes will go and this will be 100. And notice the same nine, the same units, the same three blocks represented nine, a distance of nine here between one and 10. It's a distance of 90 between 10 and 100. And so we've seen this previously when we talked about semi-log plots before. This would be 1,000 and this would be 10,000. And really what I'm plotting is the following. I'm plotting the exponent on 10. So this is, I'll use a different color. This horizontal 
at this mark is the exponent 0, which results in 10 to the 0 is 1. This is exponent 1. 10 to the 1 is 10. This is 2 because 10 squared is 100. This is 3. Why? Because this is 10 cubed. This is 4 because this is 10 to the 4th. So I'm actually plotting the exponents on this axis and making them equally distant from each other. But really, the number underneath is 90, 900, 9,000, 90,000, 900,000 apart. Now, we've already plotted something out previously, and how we can do this is the following. Okay, so we'll look at the we'll look at the example that they have in the book to actually go kind of from sort of from scratch. Okay, so let's look at this, if we take logs of both sides, so let's say I have the exponential function y equals 3 times 2 to the x. So this is a doubling function because I'm multiplying times 2 repetitively and I start out with the, my starting amount is 3. So my starting amount is 3, 2 to the x. So this is how straightforward this is. It's not any more complicated than this. I'm going to take the logarithm of both sides. So if I take log base 10 of y and log base 10 of 3 times 2 to the x, this stays as log, 10, uh, log y for now. This becomes, remember, if I had the product of two uh, items in the logarithm, I can take the separate logarithm of each factor and add them. So this becomes log 3 plus log 2 to the x. Then I can rewrite this with the x as the coefficient. So now I have log y equals log base 10 of 3 plus x log of 2. Now logarithm 2 is a number so let's type in logarithm 2 in here function I mean it's over there on the screen but I just want to show you how I'm getting this so log 2 is 0 0.301 so over in the book they just point, put 0 0.3 so this coefficient is 0.3 that's what the log base, uh, log base 10 of 2 is and that's the slope of x plus what's the log of 3 so now I'm gonna go enter functions log I'm gonna put 3 in there just take the log base 10 of 3 that's 0.477 we'll probably put 0.48 so this is 0.48 so notice I have what looks like a linear function now let's write down here this this log y I can change that and say y is equal to log y which means my line is equal to 0.3x plus 0.48. And so I have a slope and the y-coordinate of my y-intercept. So I have this equation, capital Y equals 0.3x plus 0.48. That's a linear equation. And that's what they plotted over here on the left. And they've drawn this logarithmic scale over here. See how it's bunching up as it gets closer to 10? because the distance between 10 and 1 is much greater than the distance between eight, uh, nine and, or 90 and 100. It's just how the logarithmic scale works. And when I transfer this over, this is 10 to the 1, the exponent is 1, so 0, 1, 2, and then they plotted our line. Okay, so there are some implications to this. Here's a summary on what we just did. We take an exponential function, we take the logarithm of both sides, use the properties of logarithms to rewrite it so we have a slope and an intercept. Please hit pause and copy this down if you need to, okay? Um, okay, so we're gonna look at number seven here. Determine which data sets, if any, there are two of them we're gonna test out, describe y as an exponential function of x, then construct the exponential function. Hint, find the average rate of change of y with respect to x. So notice we've changed this to be log y. So these numbers are log y. So in other words, like our function, this is really this is really log y rather than y equals, and they're telling us if we can figure out what the linear equation is, if it's in fact linear, then we can represent this, it's, or the data actually is exponential. So they've given us this table where we have 2.3, 4.3, 4.9, 5.2, and 5.5. And the change on, in x is plus 10, 
plus 10, plus 10, plus 10. So let's quick, I'm gonna quick write this down. 0, 10, 30, 40. So you can, I can kind of draw it out for you so it's more clear. Um, this is really log y, or we can call it cap y. And what are my numbers here? I get 2.3, 0, 1, 0, 3 and I get 4.30103 and 4.90309 5.25527 and 5.50515 now this is a change of 10 I'm going up by 10 and so that's great that makes my work a little easier because these are consistent or constant now over here I'm going to change colors because it's all kind of jammed up a little bit. Let's see if I can move this group of numbers over just a smidge. And let's find out the difference between those two. Well, 4.3 approximately minus 2.3 approximately is a difference of 10. So I'm going up by, excuse me, 2. I'm going up by 2. Here, I have 4.9 approximately and 4.3 approximately. And so I'm going up 0.6. So this is plus 0.6. From 5.2 to 4.9, I'm going up, um, 4.9 to 5.2, I'm going up approximately 0.3, right? Looks like 0.35, plus 0.35, 36. And then here I'm going up, looks like 0.25, okay? Now, I'm guessing, I'm not gonna check it, I'm guessing that this is more um, exponential decline and they're trying to trick you a little bit, but Tell me, is does that look like exponent or does that look linear to you? My change must be constant for this to be linear. So is this a constant change? Now I got a plus two between these two points right here. I have a slope of two two tenths. Between these two points right here, I have a slope of 0.6 over 10, which is much smaller than two because this is equal to one fifth. This is equal to by 10 is 0 0.06. That's the slope there. This one's 0.2. The slope between 20 and 30 is um, 0.35 over 10, which is 0 0.035. And this one is between 30 and 40, it's 0 0.025 when I divide it by 10. So this is not linear. Now, why do we care if it's not linear? If it were linear, well, we'll see what the next one. If in fact was linear, then we know because this was log, in other words, I'm in a semi-log plot, that if it forms a line, then it was originally exponential relationship between the two variables. So let's check out part B. And that's x log y, which we call cap y. And we got 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 again. So these are all increments of plus 10. So I got 4.77, 3. Point, that's a 7, 3.52, let's say 3, 2.28, 1.03, and negative 0.219. And so what's the distance between those two numbers? Looks like 1.2-ish. Yeah, I'm going to be a little off because I'm not using the calculator. I'm just trying to do this so that the video is not too long. If I subtract these two, I'm going to get about 1.2. When I subtract these two, I'm going to get about 1.2. When I subtract these two, I'm going to get, because that's negative, I'm going to go down 1 and down to negative 0.2. So that's a distance of approximately 1.2. So this is approximately linear. Which is, which then tells me, because I'm on a semi-log plot, how do I know? Because these aren't actually the values for y. These are values for capital Y, which is equivalent to log Y. So if it's on a semi-log plot, log versus linear, and it forms a line, if, if the line's like that, or if the line's like this, it doesn't matter. Once I take this out of logarithmic scale and put it into linear, my function will be exponential. It will change to look exponential. And that means this data is exponential. Okay, and that's what the gist of this particular section is. Again, I don't think I'm going to be able to find mom questions that ask these sort of things, and so it's this this exercise is really relegated to your project, and I'll have something for you. Um, it might be very short and simplistic, but I'm going to try to generate data for each individual and get that to you.